Hey everyone, just wanted to do a video on some of the more in-depth details about the joystick that I showed in my last video uh, before I go back to the guitar pedal stuff. I'm pretty sure the lacquer that I used for the, uh, for the outside of the enclosure was polyurethane lacquer, I think. Um, I just used pine because I couldn't get a decent um, hardwood, but I wanted to keep the sort of blonde colour of the pine, um, which the polyurethane sort of did. It's got a bit of an amber to it because uh, pine's pretty much white. It's not even like that slight blonde colour, but um, yeah, I thought it turned out pretty well. With the holes in the bottom um, of the control panel for the buttons and the joystick, it's easier if you've got a router. You don't have to worry about doing any of this. You can just use the router to cut to bite out on the inside of the button holes where the screws go, uh, where the nuts go in. Um, but if you don't have a router, it's possible to do it without one. Um, Basically, I used a spade bit for the nut hole and went sort of halfway in, and then through the top um, with the smaller with the with the smaller spade bit, I went through the top, um, and it worked out pretty good. Just make sure that you that you cut the bigger hole out first before you cut the smaller hole out because the middle of the spade bit needs to pivot on something. So just keep that in mind when you cut it. Otherwise, if you cut the smaller hole out. You can see that the um, the spade bit doesn't have anything to pivot on, and it, it'll just it'll just um, fly around the place and just mess up the hole. You won't be able to cut it properly. So I did that for the um, buttons, but for the joystick, I used a Forstner bit and just sort of nibbled out um, around. Let's see if I can get it a bit closer. You can see just sort of nibbled out around the um, around the joystick, around the joystick hole there. Uh, which worked out okay. Uh, it's messy. I mean, it doesn't look pretty at all um, from the inside. You obviously can't see it from the outside. If you're not too concerned about that, it probably it probably won't matter. I just set the drill press to a certain height and then just sort of nibbled out the um, the wood and left about a centimetre of the wood, I think it was, uh, and then just used bolts with um, nuts to hold the joystick in place and um, countersunk the nut heads on the top so that the um, plexiglass would sit flash, flush with the um, with the enclosure. Otherwise, the um, the nut heads would sit up and the plexiglass wouldn't go down. So you've just got to countersink them so they um, so they go down. A couple of things I deviated from actually from Slagcoin's instructions. I'm pretty sure in his wood top panel he's got four screws um, that hold the wood panel down. Uh, basically, if you're new to this stuff, there's a wood, there's a wood panel under this, under the plexiglass and the um, artwork which you saw before through the bottom. This this panel here, he's, I'm pretty sure he's got through the top. He's got four screws to hold that in place. I actually ended up with a control panel that was slightly smaller than the. Um, it didn't fit perfectly inside the box, so it was going to be difficult for me to screw them in. I'd have to go in on an angle, and I, I just thought it's just going to get messy doing it that way. So. I um, use brackets underneath. See these little brackets I got from the hardware shop. There's four of them, and um, they're just they're holding that control panel in place. It's just not going anywhere. It was a pretty um, it was a pretty good solution to the problem actually. It's um, uh, um, nice and sturdy and um, easy enough to to put those in as well. An issue that I actually had was the. Uh, port blocking of the of the keyboard interface. Basically, the most modern keyboard interface boards have a feature called port blocking, which stops a phantom button being pressed. Uh, basically, if you hit three button, if you hit two buttons together, sometimes a combination can result in another but another character appearing. But the interface board stops that character from appearing. I'll get a bit of paper and I'll, sh I'll show you this example on paper, it'll probably be easier. So basically how this um, keyboard hack works is you've got all these tracks on the interface board, they kind of look sort of similar to this, and um, uh, you, just sort of, you just sort of number them one to, usually I think there's 24 or 26 of them, um, so you'll have one to 26 tracks. And basically the way the keyboard works is that if you if you create a short between two of the pins, it'll produce a letter. So let's just say, for example, if I connect 
one and four um, like that. Uh, let's just say, for example, that's the letter W. Um, while that short is there, you'll the the letter the interface board will produce the letter W, and it'll just keep sending W to the computer until you take that link away. So basically, if you just think of that as a button, when you hold down the W button on your keyboard, it shorts those two tracks together and then W just keeps appearing on your screen until you let go. If you replace the key on your keyboard or the piece of wire to short with an arcade button, you can see how the arcade um, joystick, how my arcade joystick works and other people's that do the um, keyboard hack. Advantage of using the keyboard hack is, is basically that um, it doesn't cost anything. You just get an old keyboard and rip its guts out. That's the only reason why I used it. You don't have to do it this way. You can use a, an iPad, which is um, probably easier than this. But um, yeah, this is the only reason why I, I did it this way is because I had old keyboards stacking up and I thought I wouldn't mind using a couple to, um, to do it. Let's say you set it up like this. You've got the button on your arcade controller um, is up, left and fire one. The character is W, D and A and the track number is 1, 4, 2, 4 and 1, 2. If you press up, left and fire one at the same time, you're using track 1 and 4, track 2 and 4, and track 1 and 2. If you press up and left, and your character is moving up and left, and then you start hitting fire, but he's not firing, it's because the interface board is blocking tracks 1 and 2, because as you can see, tracks 1 and 2 are actually already being used with these two buttons. So, so technically, if you press up and left, it'll automatically start firing without you even pressing the button. But the keyboard is smart enough to know not to produce A when W and D are used. That's not going to work for us because if, you're, if you've actually set fire 1 to A and you're hitting fire, it will just block A. It will not produce A. You just basically have to make sure that you don't have this triangle where you've got 1, 4, 2, 4 and then 1, 2. You've got a button within two other buttons that you're going to press at the same time. Obviously, if you have a problem, you're running out of buttons, you can do, if you did, if you made this up, down, fire one, you'd be fine because you're never going to actually press up and down at the same time or left and right at the same time. You, you physically can't do that with a, with a joystick. So you can do, you could do this as up, down, fire one and you'd be fine. But up, left, fire one's not going to work because you can actually press diagonally up and left at the same time. And then you're going to have this uh, this this fire one button um, blocked, or it could be up that gets blocked, or it could be left that gets blocked. You've just got to you've just got to make sure you, you don't have this triangle thing. That's from my understanding from six months ago. That's what port blocking is, and that's how I avoid it. I'm pretty sure I'm correct with that, but um, correct me if I'm wrong. Leave a comment. But that's how I remember. Uh, that's how I understood it at the time. So that's a few of the more in-depth details about how I actually put this controller together. Just thought I'd um, I'd explain a few of those things in case you're building your own. It might help you put one together. So thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe.